It's 29th September and monsoon had uh, taken a break for a few days, maybe a week. Now it's raining very nicely today here in Mumbai. And talking about rain, this is a nice paper from Manu Lal's group from Columbia University which takes a different view on how to solve the groundwater depletion problem in India as well as enhance food security and general income from food production, grain production. Uh, the pattern of uh, curry f uh, crops, for example, shown here with for rice, uh, pulses, oil seeds and other cereals, especially wheat over here, hasn't evolved over time based on some optimal climate uh, calculations. They were mostly uh, m an outcome of India trying to solve the problem of uh, droughts and famines in the 1960s and the Green Revolution that followed and then the infrastructure like canals and dams that got built to keep the uh, cropping patterns going and uh, over time not uh, uh, paying attention to whether this is optimal not only in terms of groundwater depletion and what may happen in the future in terms of climate change uh, and where the ideal uh, locations in the country may be for rice versus pulses or uh, oil seeds and so on. So this historical baggage uh, has been addressed in various ways. There are papers uh, from Ruth de Vries's group which look at uh, crop adaptation in the context of how climate will change and how crops have to shift, uh, maybe bring in more millets, more uh, climate resilient crops and so on and so forth. In the meantime, the groundwater depletion for continuing with these existing cropping uh, locations uh, is extracting groundwater at a rate of uh, several meters per uh, year in some regions, which is obviously not sustainable. Uh, so this p paper from Manu Lal takes a different uh, approach, uh, it uses cropping model, economics kind of model, optimization to argue that the public distribution system and procurement regions for each of these crops uh, that the government is running uh, can be changed uh, so that uh, the uh, optimization can be done in terms of uh, how to uh, go after uh, either no irrigation or a capped irrigation because night now irrigation also is exacerbated because there are subsidized electricity uh, uh, incentives offered to uh, mine groundwater and the groundwater levels keep dropping and deeper you go the more you are pumping uh, more energy you are extracting and then there are other details of contamination from arsenic and other things so this is a rather unique approach uh, what they do is uh, point out that in fact where some of the crops are being grown like rice and other uh, cereals are in fact in the regions where uh, rainfall is uh, low in the mean during the summer monsoon uh, and they don't get winter monsoon here uh, and the variance, the variability is very high as well. So these are about the worst places uh, to be the bread baskets of India. This is of course the desert of Rajasthan, but Punjab, which is generally the bread basket of India, uh, lives with this uh, uh, high variability in rain, but the uh, crop production often is independent or the water use, groundwater mining is independent of how much it has rained because people are pumping water and irrigating even if there is a good amount of rain. So these are kind of the complications one has to deal with. Uh, <coughs> using this model, basically the paper here concludes uh, by comparing uh, of current versus optimal national revenues, crop production and nutritional value. So they are trying to save groundwater. Of course it comes with energy savings and also uh, food security also in terms of total crop production incomes versus nutritional value. So this is current versus optimal national agricultural revenue. So in the current uh, conditions, uh, current practices with the public distribution system and the procurement system by the government with the current cropping uh, uh, patterns, uh, it is around uh, just under 3 trillion uh, Indian rupees and 
the optimized approach they are proposing, they consider two scenarios, irrigation zero and irrigation capped. This is a modeling exercise, so obviously there are many assumptions involved, and this is not so much focused on climate change. It is just taking the mean climate in the uh, current uh, system and then looking for how a distribution of procurement uh, locations can change uh, water use, electricity use and grain production and national agricultural revenue. So you can see that irrigation zero scenario increases that a tiny bit but irrigation capped can bump it up quite a bit. So optimized irrigation uh, kind of work have been considered at global and regional scales but implementing them uh, actually hasn't been that uh, 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 successful and also uh, moving crops have been so successful. So even though this paper is great, we still have to worry about this as a good strategy, but how will it be implemented? Okay, so in B we are looking at current versus optimal national production levels in millions of tons for rice, so it doesn't make much difference in current irrigation zero or irrigation uh, capped scenarios, but other cereals are uh, also similar, they are lower in India is a big rice consuming and rice exporting country, so obviously that's very high. Other cereals are about a third or less of that. Uh, pulses, you can see that uh, uh, in the model that is being optimized, being, being used here for optimization, uh, the pulses more than double in terms of uh, national production and similarly oil seeds also increase uh, more than double in the um, irrigation zero and capped irrigation scenarios. So irrigation zero obviously will save a lot of energy but one can also think of, of the uh, opportunity cost. So if you make this choice and you focused on saving water and electricity then you are losing potentially higher yield, higher grain production so that opportunity cost is also calculated and it shows that there are many states which can uh, benefit uh, from uh, reducing that opportunity cost and making a choice of uh, cap irrigation capped versus irrigation zero for example we'll see a figure in a minute the nutritional value energy in kilocalories uh, current intake uh, this is the recommended intake current intake is already higher uh, with uh, irrigation zero you reduce the current intake but you're still in the recommended intake uh, value uh, range and this is important because obes obesity food waste are obviously a big problem in India as well and if this can uh, save water and reduce uh, overeating uh, over consumption with the expanding middle class then that would be good as well but with irrigation capped again uh, nutritional value uh, goes up uh, relative to recommended intake so uh, irrigation zero irrigation so this is for uh, folate uh, in micrograms so uh, energy and folates uh, current uh, so D is current and uh, current versus optimal nutritional value for proteins, fats, iron, and niacin, which is an acid that's essential for cell functioning and so on. So for nutritional uh, uh, recommended values uh, also are shown here in each case: proteins, uh, fat, uh, iron, uh, and niacin. And again, uh, there are some uh, improvements made. Uh, of course consuming too much protein compared to recommended intake. Is that good or bad? Uh, we have to worry about that. Fat, of course, uh, fortunately current intake is lower, but this is probably averaged out over very poor people who consume much less than recommended and very rich people who, conserve, uh, who consume much more than recommended. But nonetheless, uh, irrigation zero and irrigation capped scenarios increase uh, the fat consumption here and iron uh, is uh, also improved with uh, irrigation capped and same for niacin. So you can read the paper for more details. So the recommended uh, changes or optimization strategy in terms of procurement, uh, water use, groundwater depletion and energy use are like this. These are relative changes in areas uh, in Karif season compared to what's happening now. So in the optimized scenario for irrigation zero and irrigation capped uh, for rice for example there are regions where uh, the uh, 
current regions uh, have to be reduced in some places so that those are the negative numbers and they can be increased in some other regions uh, like here in Karnataka, Madhya Pradesh, Northeast up here uh, so this is for irrigation zero scenario and this is for irrigation capped scenario and you can see the differences uh, over many places especially here uh, for example in Karnataka and Madhya Pradesh um, other cereals, uh, irrigation zero, uh, irrigation uh, capped, again, some changes in areas, some increases, some decreases, so there is redistribution of where they will be grown so that government can plan procurements along those lines as well. Similarly for pulses, oil seeds and so on. So this can translate then into net gain in income in trillion uh, rupees India Indian so irrigation zero scenarios the greenish uh, colors are increases and reddish colors are decreases compared to the current uh, income levels this is the for irrigation zero and the net gain in income in trillions is for irrigation capped you can see that there will be some losses uh, but energy saved uh, will be very high uh, for net zero and uh, irrigation capped so you are optimizing uh, things and you are also saving water here water saved in billion cubic meters in irrigation zero scenario and irrigation capped scenario obviously when irrigation capped uh, is compared to irrigation zero you are using more water here but you are still trying to optimize uh, crop distributions uh, and uh, water use and energy use, right? Um, so the crop distribution changes required uh, for uh, climate change adaptation and so on have been done as well, but those are mostly for uh, rain fed agriculture and not so much for all crops that include irrigation as well. So, this idea here is to extend uh, the crop selections to improve groundwater depletion situation as well as improve net income and also look at nutrition that results from uh, doing these things. So here is water saved from irrigation cap. The opportunity cost uh, in trillions again for irrigation zero and irrigation capped. Again opportunity cost is basically if you chose option A and you look at option B that you had that you didn't choose, what would have been the outcome if you chose B? and if this is less than uh, option B then you are obviously paying an opportunity cost by saving energy and water but reducing your income overall and so on so there are many states which will uh, benefit so here are the positive numbers for irrigation zero and irrigation capped so some uh, states are paying an opportunity cost so they would benefit uh, from uh, going from uh, for example irrigation zero here opportunity cost is higher than irrigation capped so doing uh, optimal capped irrigation will reduce the opportunity cost for uh, the state here uh, which should be Andhra Pradesh and uh, Telangana combined uh, they have split recently but and Karnataka as well okay and of course uh, Punjab shows up in all these cases as well okay so let's just read a few words about the discussion India's public distribution system can be seen as a version of contract farming in which a farm producer and a buyer agree on terms for the quality quantity and price for what is to be grown so there is a base price set which is supposed to be above the production cost the Indian government has demonstrated that this is a powerful tool for shaping crop choices and integrating uh, technology, financing and appropriate inputs like fertilizers, water and insurance instruments to support rural economic development while meeting the food security and nutritional needs of 1.3 billion people. So there are issues of course about loan sharks, uh, farmer suicides, going after crops like sugarcane or cotton in uh, regions which don't have enough water for it but we are already talking about rice being grown <coughs> based on the old uh, evolution uh, in places where uh, it's not optimal it's extraordinary uh, it is an extraordinary success story for a country plagued by famine when its population was 300 million in the 1960s over time the intensification and concentration of agriculture to support the PDS goals 
have led to poignant environmental and water resource sustainability concerns. Finally, it's kind of interesting that they have actually had discussions. So at the level of impact, our discussions with farmers in Punjab and Gujarat indicate that they would welcome returning to traditional or other crops grown in those areas with government procurement at a cost plus margin, which is the same as the current public public distribution system. There is an expectation that the government would also support these measures through research, agricultural extension, technology and financial measures to increase the productivity and reliability of production of alternate crops. So every time you ask farmers to change their ways, go move to a different crop, uh, you have to somehow incentivize them, provide guarantees on prices technological support, financial tools, uh, extension services which gives them good advice and so on. Thus a refocusing of the public distribution system could indeed allow India's government to facilitate a transition to a sustainable water energy food future. In our analysis we accounted for the historical climate variations, so they have looked at how the optimization is done in the context of uh, what has been happening in terms of monsoon mean and variability, decrease in extremes or uh, so on. Climate change projections for the 21st century continue to be somewhat uncertain. Consequently, an uh, adaptive strategy that considers, considers five-year plans and associated climate change scenarios would provide a robust strategy for moving f toward a sustainable future. Our future research endeavors will continue to address these. Okay, Nice paper, so even though I didn't go into the details of the models, which uh, you can read up if you're interested, I did want to give you a sense of how this approach uh, is taken to reduce groundwater depletion, ensure food security, and uh, increase income as well by redistributing crops uh, and the associated issues with them. Of course, when information is co-produced, it is l much more likely to be used more. So they have talked to the farmers. There are all kinds of uh, changes being uh, prop uh, proposed, like moving to millets, not only for farmers, but also for people uh, to consume. Because if you grow millets and nobody is buying them, that's not going to work, and so on. Okay.